That carry good for look like about 11 yards. It is a first down for the Colonials. They're at the Narstown 31 yard line. Quinn in motion, takes the handoff. Boy, look at that blocking out front for Qu Craig Quinn. Narstown back on its heels on that play. Yeah, their, their running attack really strikes you quickly. So far they haven't run any uh, delays or draws or anything like that. It's just hand off and go. And all three of those guys can really get past that line of scrimmage very quickly. Something we've seen Narstown succeed in doing, Walt, is having those linebackers shoot the running plays. We all, we've oftentimes seen the linebackers in the opponent's backfield before the handoff is made, and we haven't seen any of that today. The, the blocks are really being sealed off nicely by, by the Colonial line. This time Scott fumbles, ball's loose. I believe he got it back. Might even have picked up a yard. Well, I'll tell you, James Scott, lucky to recover that ball. And it was that the fact that Narstown has not been able to penetrate the offensive backfield so far, and that James Scott was able to recover that. Had there been penetration that time, Plymouth Whitemarsh was, would have been in jeopardy of losing another fumble. Well, actually give him a yard on that play. Bring up third and one from the Narstown 23-yard line. And I tell you, Walt, that was the exchange. Scott never had that ball. That ball was bouncing off his thigh as he, as he hit the hole. Quinn in motion, takes the handoff, cuts inside for the first down. And that's just what that play was designed to do, give them enough for the first down. Yeah, and the motion has been really effective, also preventing Narstown from uh, really getting any good tackles for losses. That time they sent Quinn in motion from right to left and into the backfield, took the handoff in full stride and was able to pick up the first. Colonials with the wind in this second quarter, haven't needed it, have not gone to the air, but they do have a strong wind at their backs. The handoff to Scott, nothing there. Boy, I'll tell you, there's good defense by the Eagles. On the bottom of that pile, Yaboa Cabold, joined by number 51, Troy Ellis. And Cabold's been an important figure on that defensive line this year. Uh, mostly through his penetration. He's, he's been able to, to get after some quarterbacks when other teams have been forced to throw the ball. And that time you saw him really get in there to cut Scott down before he could get his legs going. Second and 10 for PW from the Norristown 20 yard line. Nine minutes to go. Fumble on the exchange. It's loose. Norristown ball. Wow. Well, I didn't get the bottom of that pile. Looks like number 11, Jim Zitzer on the fumble recovery. Certainly not what we expected from the Colonials in this ball game. No, they've been a little bit sloppy, and it's, uh, it lo looks like it may be a letdown factor, but maybe the cold as well. One way or another, though, they're certainly not playing as cleanly as they have all year. That time it was on the exchange from Beard to Kupfer, and the Eagles, with their second fumble recovery of the game, stopped that Colonial drive. Swittenberg up the middle. Swittenberg bounced off the first tackler, maybe picked up a yard or two. Chuck Tornetta on the tackle. And this is where Narsten will really have to rely on their running game. You throw into a win like this and uh, you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't want that ball to be hanging up for defenders can, to get a break on it. Uh, so Narsten's going to have to pound their way out of here, I think, with the running game. Second and nine for the Eagles. Blake on the pitch, Stewart bobbles, recovers, cuts it up inside with a nice gain. Well, I tell you, nobody seems very sure-handed down on that field today. No, that's, that's, and that's gonna make the uh, long snaps, shotguns, punts, and, and a pitch like that even more difficult. It seems like when they have to receive that ball and it's not from, from center to quarterback, it's a little bit tough to handle. And Walt, as you mentioned, I don't think we'll see much passing in this quarter from the Eagles as they face that stiff wind. They certainly aired it out a bit in the first quarter. A little bit different condition coming back across the field into the wind. Third down and three. 
Swittenberg has Stewart out front. He bounces off, and I'll tell you, nice tackle by the inside linebacker, Tim Fleming, because Swittenberg was real close to breaking it to the outside. Yeah, he was trying, but they had a uh, couple linebackers and the safety, Chris Dempsey, up there to make sure he couldn't get outside. And unfortunately, with only one lead blocker out in front, uh, just too many Colonials for Swittenberg to beat. Brings up fourth and three from their own 28. The Eagles will be forced to punt. Albi Morano on, and no easy task to punt into this wind. In fact, the Colonials putting nobody back. Wow. Oh, low snap, fumbled. Morano's not gonna get it off. It's gonna be picked up at the 13 yard line. And that is not what the Eagles needed. A bad snap, Morano couldn't handle it. There's a flag on the play. I believe that call's gonna be against Morano for kicking the ball off the turf. The officials conferring with Captain Stu Kupfer. That's the call against the Eagles. It's declined. It'll be first down for Plymouth White Marsh. Interesting set that time. Yacovetti puts nobody back deep, counting on the wind to contain that ball. And in fact, the wind didn't even have to do anything. The Eagles couldn't get it up in the air. Yeah, it turned out to be a good play with that wind. That ball, depending on how high Murano would have gotten it had he punted, it might have come back to the line. <laughs> of so it's true. probably a smart move, not putting anybody back. It looks like they were coming after it. And by coming after it, allowed guys to be there to pick up that ball when the snap was fumbled. So the Eagles get a big break with their fumble recovery, and now they fumble it right back. It's at the 15-yard line, Quinn to the outside. Boy, I'll tell you, look at that good pursuit by the Eagle defenders. Look to me like Webster and Delucia outside on the tackle. Yeah, and a nice job of coming up to make the tackle by cornerback E instead. Uh, Stead's probably gonna need some help on Quinn. He's a good tackler, but uh, Quinn's a pretty big guy once he gets rumbling out there, and Stead's probably gonna need some help. That time was able to hold up Quinn so that Webster and Delucia could come over and finish the tackle. Three yards on that play bring up second and seven from the Eagle 12 yard line. Paul Kupfer, the handoff to Scott. He's got room to the outside. Oh boy, I'll tell you, he beat the corner. Daryl Johnson, the linebacker, made a touchdown saving tackle. And I tell you what, Aud Audley Stewart just got schooled by James Scott. Yeah, that's the same thing that he did to Don Milligan. Uh, James Scott looks like you're going to have him, and he just has excellent speed to the outside of the field and is able to turn it up very quickly. Uh, so now, two, so far, he's made two Narstown defensive backs miss. Johnson stopped the touchdown, but not the first down. It's first and goal now from just inside the Eagle five-yard line. This time they come back with Kelly, smashing it up the middle. The Eagles stop him short of the goal line. The tackler that time, Yeboah Kabold. It'll be second in goal. This is where it becomes really tough. All you can do is just sort of hold your lane and make sure that uh, you don't give up your position, not get pushed back, because Plymouth White Marsh can come with any one of those three guys who can put it in the end zone. I mean, James Scott, 20 touchdowns, Craig Quinn, 19, and Dan Kelly, the big fullback with seven, and this is his kind of situation to make it number eight. Second and goal from the Eagle two. Little misdirection, oh, I tell you what, they had Quinn in the backfield, weren't able to stop him. Colonials say touchdown, and now the officials agree. One official signaling touchdown, now the referee giving us the signal. Six points on the board for Plymouth White Marsh. I believe that was Quinn up the middle. And Quinn bounced off the initial tackler, Yaboa Kabold. That was who hit him in the backfield. Bounced off nicely and just sort of stumbled towards the goal line. And that last little push put the ball across. And on to kick the extra point is number 17, Matt Fold. And Walt, this statistic tells you a little bit about the season the Colonials have had. Fold has 49 points after touchdown this year. Yeah, and he only 49. Has, that's amazing, and only one field goal, so they don't get stopped much. Plenty of leg, and it's good. Boy, I tell you what, he just busted a window in the parking lot, I think. He kicked the heck out of that ball. 7-0 Colonials. There's 5-17 to play in this first half. 
And that time, the Colonials able to capitalize on a Norristown mistake. And Walt, you are never going to be able to give this team the ball at your own 15-yard line and expect to keep them out of the end zone. No, 15 yards is, is a piece of cake for them. And in this case, they took a minute and a half and four plays to get it into the end zone. Um, you can't, cannot turn the ball over against a team that's good, and unfortunately, Narstown has not been able to capitalize on the two turnovers that the Colonials have given them. Uh, but now they're just going to have to even things up straight up offensively now. And certainly the game plan for Plymouth White Marsh has been run the ball. They've done it so successfully, they have yet to throw the ball in this car. Pardon me, they had one incomplete pass early in the game on a third down situation. Cup for to cup for when incomplete. That's the only attempt they've made so far. So back deep for the Eagles, Stewart and Stewart. Audley and Garvin back deep to receive for Narstown. Interesting, we don't have Troy Swittenberg back there as we have most of the season. Fold is ready. It's a deep kick over the head of Stewart into the end zone for a touchback. I tell you, that ball had a lot of carry. Audley Stewart thought that ball was going to hit him in the chest and it went over his head. <laughs> Yeah, carried right through the end zone. And in fact, Swittenberg was out on the field that time. He was a short man, uh, which is a pretty curious call considering that with the wind and the leg you just saw fold exhibit, you pretty much figured that that ball is going to get close to the goal line. Well, the Eagles will have another offensive opportunity here from their own 20-yard line. Chris Blake, the junior, onto the field. Try and get this Narstown offense cranked up a bit here. They did move the ball with some success early in the game, Walt but have not been so successful in this second quarter. Zitzer and Pronsati are split this time. The handoff goes to Swittenberg. Swittenberg up the middle. Good maneuvering that time by Troy Swittenberg. Gets him about five yards. The tackle made by number 10, Stu Kupfer. And they play that 4-4 defense, but it's a, it's a very aggressive 4-4 defense because that time, the only safety they play with, Chris Dempsey, number 42, was right up there to hit Troy Swittenberg. But Swittenberg ran right through his tackle to pick up the five. Second and five. Blake, the quick hand off to Stewart. He's tripped up right at the line of scrimmage by Kupfer. Number 10 on number 10. Stewart manages to fall forward, picks up about two on the play. Let's call it third and a long three. And the Plymouth White Marsh defense certainly has uh, not had to do, not had to have any exceptional games this year with the way their offense scores points. But they've only given up 139 points this year, just over 11 a game. So uh, they're certainly no slouch defense. When you counter that with the fact that they've scored 448 points, that's a pretty good margin. <laughs> Third down for the Eagles. The shotgun, they come with the blitz. Set up the screen. Stewart's got it. Can he get to the marker? Garvin Stewart with a great effort, but he stopped short. I'll tell you what, he really had to lunge to catch that ball, Walt. Then I thought he was going to be dropped for a loss. Managed to take it forward, but it's going to bring up fourth down nonetheless. Yeah, and the Eagles designed that play to work just that way. Unfortunately, a little better throw was needed to uh, allow Garvin Stewart to turn up field a little bit more quickly. Roger Grove calls time, which I think is a good decision on his part on fourth down. It's about three and a half minutes left to play in this first half. His team is thrown 29 yard line, fourth and, and one. And the last time they tried to punt the ball, it resulted in a, an easy touchdown for the Colonials off of the, the fumbled exchange. And while you look at those guys out there, that wind is just buffeting. If you, if you can see the flags folks here at Roosevelt Field, they are just blowing unbelievably. The flags are stiff and they are blowing straight into the face of the Eagles. And yeah, it's really affecting everything. It's, it's affected everything from a pitch into the backfield to the long snap to obviously passing and, and kicking of the ball. So uh, that's what the timeout is for, I think. You really have to think it over and, uh, and be very careful. Make sure everybody knows their roles and knows what they're doing. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Since the beginning of this game, the crowd has really filled in. Certainly the best crowd we've seen all year here at Roosevelt Field. It's nice to see almost every section of stands with someone sitting in it. 
Credit to Joe Fabrizio, the athletic director, and his counterpart at Plymouth White Marsh for arranging this contest today and reinstituting a, a long-held tradition of, oh, another low snap. Murano fumbles, gets it off, straight into the wind, and the ball, as Walt said, actually came back at him. Boy, that's unbelievable. It's going to be down at the line of scrimmage. Nope, it's not down. Touchdown. Oh, the Eagles with a huge mental mistake. Huge mental mistake. That was number 26, Steve Whitman. Yeah, it's, Troy Swittenberg is hot. He, he thinks that that was down or might have rolled out of bounds. But uh... Swittenberg really, is, as you say, is hot. The Eagles think they downed that ball. That ball, Murano, off the low snap, managed to get it away. And you could actually see the ball fall backwards. I mean, the wind literally blew the ball backwards and it fell at the original line of scrimmage at the Narstown 29. It was going to be a terrible situation anyway. Somehow, the ball wasn't down and Whitman comes in, picks the ball up, carries it 29 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, and without a good snap, Marana did all he could do just to get the ball away. He couldn't concentrate on keeping it low through the wind. Fold on again for another extra point. Blasts another one. Oh, off of a minivan. It's good. <laughs> Thank goodness that, that minivan had a sloped hood. <laughs> it's not your car, is it? Well, you're not a minivan kind of guy, no, are you? No, no, and I park on the street for just such an occasion. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, that's a, that's a real, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a mistake from the Eagles because we couldn't see from over here what exactly the situation was. But uh, one way or another, uh, somebody fell asleep because until the official call is made and the whistle blows, you have to keep going. Uh, so that's a, a, a real heartbreaker for the Eagles. And once again, a mistake that cost them a touchdown, and you can't do it against this team. Now, to, to have two such mistakes here in the first half is just heartbreaking. The Eagles are playing a very good defensive game here, managing to contain a, a high-powered offense, and the Colonials helping out a bit with some fumbles, and Narstown just giving them two quick scores, and that's, that's a darn shame. Eagles have to pick their heads up, though, and come back out and continue to play this game. They've got a lot of time left. 14 points is certainly not insurmountable. The deep kick over the head of Stewart again. Boy, I'll tell you what, that ball landed six yards deep in the end zone. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if Matt Fold's going to college, he should send this tape <laughs> to the college recruiters because uh, this is the one you want to see. He's blasting it into the end zone, and it's just going straight through. Maybe they ought to send this to Chris Boniel uh, for the Eagles and let him let him know what it looks like to see a kickoff yeah. land in the end zone. Well, the Eagles need to be a little creative like they do up in Giant Stadium, open the doors, get a little wind flow going through, <laughs> so that maybe Boniel can get a ball 40 yards. So Narstown will try again here, first and 10. Expected to be the running game as they face this wind. Blake to Swittenberg, loss on the play. Loss of a yard. Good job up front by the Colonials. And consider the fact that Narstown does have over three minutes here. Um, the, the only, there's certainly nothing good about what just happened on special teams, but uh, the one factor is now they have some time, maybe can put some points on the board, but unfortunately they're not going to really be able to throw the ball. You just cannot do it down in this situation. You can't risk it. They're going to have to try and get it on the ground and break something long. I'll tell you what they have to do is get a first down so they don't have to punt again. Blake to Vaughn on the end around. Vaughn is contained and dropped for a loss. Boy, I'll tell you what, credit the Colonials was staying home that time. Linebackers Quinn and Fleming were right there to meet Don Vaughn. And they sold the, the right side of the Plymouth White Marsh defense. Linebacker Steve Whitman was ready to make a tackle on Troy Swittenberg, who was a decoy that time, but the left side really did stay home well. Third and 11 for the Eagles with 2.13 to play here in the first half. The Eagles trail 14 to nothing and it's mistakes that have done the damage. Adam Irvine comes off the field. Eagles put an extra receiver in the pattern, including Audley Stewart. Four receivers out. They go to Stewart, incomplete. Fourth down. 
That time they brought Audley Stewart in from the far side. Again, I wasn't sure if that was going to be another flea flicker. It looked like Stewart, after receiving, might want to pitch back to Blake or something there. Yeah, but it's a play that you're actually seeing more and more, it's even in the pros. Uh, with a third and long situation, uh, it's a safe pass, and the idea is to get that guy coming from the end to cut up the middle. And with a couple guys in the slot, that time it looked like Swittenberg was in the slot. Uh, you can come through and have a couple blockers out in front of you. But uh, unfortunately, Stewart couldn't handle the ball. The Eagles will try and connect on a, an exchange on a punt attempt. They have been unsuccessful their first two tries. A high snap. Murano's got it. Plenty of time. Low kick into the win. That's about as good as you can do. And the Eagles down it at the 38-yard line. So it'll be about a 20-yard kick for Murano. And Roger Grove will take it after the last two mishaps on special teams. That's a blessing, that play. Yeah, that really was about as good as Murano could do. But, Jeff, I continue to be impressed with the things that Chris Blake does. Uh, that time, three receivers. He's running pro formations, doing all kinds of different things. Um, just allows you to diversify your offense so much, and to his credit, Roger Grove has allowed it to happen and allowed his offense to mature in that way. Paul Kupfer, the handoff, double handoff that time. <laughs> James Scott was the ultimate ball carrier. The Eagles, though, drop him after a pickup of about three yards. It's a timeout on the field called by head coach Joe Iacovetti for the Colonials. He'd like to get his team into the end zone one more time here before the half. 120 to play here. His squad up on top already, 14 to nothing. While we have just a moment, we want to thank the Norristown Area School District for bringing you this ball game. We always want to thank Mr. Tony Koya, the Director of Media Relations, who Sponsors our broadcast here, Mr. Sam Galbraith, our producer and director today, ably assisted by Garrett Hickman and Azad Sharozian. Our statistician today, Greg Fry, doing his usual stellar job. I'm Jeff Brandon along with Walt Fry, and it's our pleasure to bring you a Thanksgiving Day football game, something we haven't done in a long time. It's not the old rivalry that Norristown had for decades against the Vikings of Upper Marion, but certainly it's a team that the local folks know well. Uh, Narstown in two years will be moving into the same conference as the Colonials. So we'll see a lot more of them. On second down, they put Scott in motion. The play action. Kupfer goes up top. He's got a man open. Is it complete? Yes, it is. Great pass to Jeff Brown, the split end. And I'll tell you what, Brown made a nice diving reception, Walt. Yeah, and the wind uh, allowed Brown a little bit of time to adjust. Hung up a little bit. Kupfer just threw it up in the air and let the wind carry it way down the field. Brown made a nice adjustment, and it doesn't look like the Eagles were ready for the pass play that time. It's only the second time the Colonials have gone to the air. More successful than their first attempt, which was incomplete. This time they go to Quinn. Quinn bounces off a tackle, cuts it up inside. The Eagles contain Cabold down bottom with the tackle. 47 seconds to play before the half, and Iacovetti takes time again. That's his second timeout, one remaining. Jeff, we discussed how well James Burrell and some of those other Norristown offensive linemen get out in front of their backs and move. Uh, Plymouth Whitemarsh had some very, very fast linemen. It's been mostly B.J. Murray, uh, who's playing the right guard position, has been pulling out to the left, especially for that play they run to Quinn uh, on, the, on the motion play. Uh, B.J. Murray really getting out, and that's allowed Quinn to either get to the outside or cut up inside as he did that time. That seems to be his favorite move. Uh, but B.J. Murray is getting out there, locking up on his guy and giving Quinn a lot of room to run. So the Colonials with a golden opportunity here to really put it to the Eagles in this first half. But I'll tell you folks, at, at the six minute mark in this second quarter, it was, a, it was a scoreless game. The Eagles have made it easy for Plymouth White Marsh, allowing them to put 14 points on the board, and the Eagle offense has certainly sputtered as they've had to go into the wind here. And I think their offense has, has, has really grown uh, as an all-around offense, including the pass, and they just have not been able to do it today. So second down and eight for the Colonials from the Norristown 10-yard line. The play action again. Kupfer up top. Man out of the backfield is Quinn. Touchdown. Boy, I tell you, great pass by Paul Kupfer. Quinn in stride, 
receives the ball at the three and waltzes into the end zone for six points. It's 20 to nothing. Plymouth White Marsh with 41 seconds to play before halftime. It was a 10 yard strike for the Colonials. And for Craig Quinn, that's his 12th catch of the year. Had 168 yards receiving coming into this game. So he's seen the ball thrown his way a little bit this year. And that's his third touchdown through the air. Oh, hit another minivan. It was good. Another reason not to buy a minivan. Matt Fold's definitely, Football a, sport, damage. definitely a sport utility guy, Matt Fold. Absolutely. Doesn't like those minivans. Must have had a bad experience as a child or something, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't, his parents never let, us, let him sit up front or something because he's nailing these minivans today. Well, on a more serious note, the Eagles down in this contest 21 to nothing, and boy, did it happen in a hurry. Yeah, another mistake and another four play drive for the Colonials. This one took only a minute. A couple pass plays on that one for 22, and then the final one for 10 yards to Craig Quinn allowing him to walk into the end zone. So Plymouth White Marsh, this drive showing a little bit of creativity in their offense that they can do a couple of different things and can certainly see how they've put up a lot of points this year. Once again, the deep backs, Garvin and Audley Stewart, Swittenberg and Johnson, the next rung for the Eagles. And this time it goes over Stewart's head again. Ball once again landing in the end zone for a touchback. So the Eagles will try to do something here from their own 20 yard line. They just have to get something positive going and these 41 seconds could help the Eagles do that. Uh, first down would really be nice for them right now. Uh, just to allow them to run the clock out at the end of this half and just to show that they can pick up a first down and when they come back out in the second half, uh, know that there are some things that they can do offensively to get back into the game. So Stewart and Swittenberg in the eye. Pronsati wide left. The pitch to Swittenberg. Troy cuts it up inside. Picks up about six yards on the play. He is dropped by number 42 for the defenders. The safety, Chris Dempsey. He is an aggressive run stopper, Chris Dempsey. He likes to come up and even shoot past his linebackers. Uh, they let him roam, and I'm, he's keen on Swittenberg today, doing a very good job of keeping Troy to short yardage. So the clock is winding down. This will be the last play of the half. Ten seconds to go. Narstown fakes the pitch, go to Garvin Stewart up the middle, and he picked up about four yards, but that's going to be it. That's the last play of the half. So at halftime, the Colonials, an impressive second quarter, gives them a 21-point lead in this game. They go into the locker room up 21 to nothing. Walt and I will be back in just a moment to talk about that first half of play. Well, folks, at the half, the score, 21 to nothing. And I'll tell you what, if you tuned in about midway through that second quarter, you'd have said, gee, what a great game. Scoreless tie, everything's back and forth a little bit, but Narstown special teams have really hurt them, Walt. Uh, and certainly the wind has been no, no aid in their, uh, their effort today. Yeah, they've had a couple of bad snaps, and then uh, on the second bad snap, the punt that they did get off, Narsana thought they had downed the ball, and uh, officials thought otherwise. And the Plymouth White Marsh player just picked it up and ran into the end zone with uncontested. Uh, and that was really a, really a backbreaker because that put it up 14-0, and then Narstown was really pressed to try and get some points on the board and force them into a couple other mistakes. The Eagle offense really had a difficult time going from right to left here with the, the wind staring at them in that second quarter, and those three punts all were converted into touchdowns by the Colonials. Certainly Plymouth White Marsh with a 21 point lead is daunting to say the least. Yeah, the way they run the ball, you really have to like them with the 21 point lead. Uh, Narstown defense has not played badly, however. The best drive the Plymouth White Marsh had, uh, they were working on their 10th play and James Scott fumbled the ball away to Narstown. Now they couldn't convert it into points, but uh, it was at that point where Narstown, you thought might have might have caught a break there. And they had the ball at midfield and could do something, but unfortunately those other mistakes later in the game cost them. 
And I tell you what, James Scott put up some impressive numbers, gaining what, 84 yards, I believe it was in that first half. And his, his mates in the backfield, Quinn and Kelly, less spectacular numbers, but that tandem really benefits from a tremendous offensive line. Yeah, well, Quinn and Kelly really wear you down, and then James Scott is the burner. Uh, and he's been, every run he's had, all of his 10 carries have been to the, mostly to the right, some to the middle. Uh, but everything has been the middle or the right. So James Scott uh, really, really has been the main yardage gainer. But Craig Quinn also matching James Scott with 10 carries, only 37 yards. Um, but he's grinding it out and doing the effective things to get first downs. Now, Narsan holding both those players under their season average. Uh, James Scott with a real gaudy per carry average of 11.9 yards. But... Uh, today, only 8.4, but that's certainly been enough for the Colonial so far. The Narstown offense led by the junior quarterback, Chris Blake, has been largely ineffective. They, they moved the ball to some extent in that first quarter, but were unable to do so later in the half. Swittenberg held to only 23 yards. Garvin Stewart, only a handful of yards, and, and Blake three for seven through the air. Yeah, and they've really been hurt by the, the 10 carries, 23, only 23 yards from Troy Swittenberg. 